Hi, in this video, we're gonna talk about bone tissue. Uh, so I want to clarify bone tissue compared to bone organs. Uh, so a tissue, if you remember from your anatomy class, is uh, you know, a collection of cells, usually with a common embryonic origin that are working together towards a common goal, uh, versus an organ is a collection of two or more different tissues that form a structure that work towards a common goal. Um, so we have bone tissue, which is what we're gonna talk about in this video, um, but then there's also bone organs, which we talk about in a separate video. Uh, so bone tissue is one of several tissues that make up a bone organ. So here we're talking about bone tissue. We have four types of cells in bone tissue, osteogenic cells, osteoblasts, osteocytes, and osteoclasts. Um, osteogenic cells are basically stem cells that are in bone tissue, and that's where we're producing new bone cells all the time. So osteogenic cells are constantly dividing and creating new cells, and it's creating osteoblasts. Any cell that ends in blast with a B uh, is a builder cell. It's something that's producing or making something. Any cell that ends in clast with a C, like at the, the last one there, um, that's any cell that is breaking things down. Okay, so osteogenic cells are dividing and creating osteoblasts. Those are bone building cells. So the osteoblasts go around and lay down uh, bone tissue. They're going around and laying down extracellular matrix of the tissue, so secreting fibers, mostly collagen, um, and secreting um, powder that basically is like jello mix. It's basically like jello powder and mixes with uh, water and creates kind of a gelatinous environment. Um, and then it's also secreting um, minerals to harden and make that bone tissue very dense and tough. Okay, so the osteoblasts are just living their lives, secreting, secreting, secreting to build bone. Now they keep doing that and they keep doing that and eventually they kind of paint themselves into a corner with bone tissue. Like imagine you're painting the floor in the room you're in and you're painting and painting and painting and now you're finally stuck, you're surrounded by wet paint, it's nowhere to go. And that's kind of what the osteoblasts do. They lay down bone tissue everywhere and then they're sort of surrounded by all the bone tissue that they created and there's nowhere to go. So at that point, we would say that they fully matured and now they're osteocytes, so bone cells. So they're osteoblasts while they're building, building, building until they've really painted themselves in a corner and all they really have to do now is maintain the bone tissue that they built around them and those are osteocytes. Osteoclasts are a totally separate cell. Okay, so osteogenic cells divide and create osteoblasts. Osteoblasts mature and become osteocytes. Osteoclasts are a completely different cell that migrate to live in the bone tissue. Uh, so they're actually a type of um, phagocyte. So if you think back to phagocytes, those are the big Pac-Man cells that go around gobbling stuff up. Uh, they clean up old debris, they clean up old cells, pathogens, all kinds of stuff. Um, and so those are big Pac-Man cells that digest and break things down to get rid of it. Um, so we have these phagocytes that in the case of bone, we call osteoclasts and they migrate to the bone and then they live their whole lives in the bone as osteoclasts. And it's their job to break down bone tissue and clean up bone tissue. Uh, so there needs to be a balance between the osteoblast building and the osteoclast breaking down. And that's how we remodel and maintain our healthy bone tissue. Uh, if we break a bone, um, or if, you know, sometimes the osteoclasts outpace the osteoblast, but if we break a bone, the osteoclasts are there to clean up that old debris and make room so the osteoblast can build new bone. Um, but again, we want to keep them on pace with each other because if the osteoclasts are going faster and breaking down bone faster than the osteoblasts are building it, then we have a bone density problem. Um, that's where we have like osteoporosis or some other bone condition um, where we're losing bone tissue uh, because the osteoclasts are going too fast. Okay, so bone tissue is made up of half crystallized mineral salts. 
Uh, so that's where our calcium, magnesium, zinc, and so on. Uh, that gives the bone its hardness and strength. And then 25% collagen fibers, that gives it flexibility and reinforcement. And then another 25% water. So I know it seems a little weird if you think about it, but 25% of our bone tissue is all water. You know, we talk a lot about muscle mass and fat and all of that and how much of our body is water, but 25% of bone mass is water. Um, so something interesting about bones, if you can imagine, if I took a human bone and put it in an acid bath, it would draw out those crystallized mineral salts. And what we'd be left with is basically a bone shape made of just the collagen fibers. So we can extract out those mineral salts just so that we could see what's left of the collagen. And what we would have is a bone that keeps its shape as a bone, but it's bendy, you can, it's flexible, we can bend it and make it into different shapes. Uh, so just to kind of illustrate for you what the collagen is doing in the bone. So it makes it flexible and strong, so it's reinforced in its strength and its shape. Um, but what gives it its hardness and strength are the minerals. So if I take that flexible, bendy bone and put it now in a mineral bath, it will reconstitute all those mineral salts that we just drew out in the acid wash. Um, so it'll reconstitute and become hard and crystallized like the original bone was. So it's kind of a cool experiment um, to do when we have access to, to those types of materials. It would require some live bones. <laughs> well, dead dead bones, cadaver bones. Um, but hopefully that illustrates for you what the mineral salts and the collagen fibers do. Um, so we have compact and spongy bone are two different types of bone tissue. Uh, so for the bone organs, remember a bone organ is made up of several different tissues. Uh, they're made up of both compact and spongy bone and a number of other tissues. So there are no bones in the body that are all compact bone, and there are no bones in the body that are all spongy bone. All of our bones are some combination of both. Um, different types of bones have different proportions of the two, depending on the needs of that particular bone, um, but there are no bones that are all of one or the other. So compact bone makes up about 80% of the whole skeleton. So most of our skeleton is compact bone, which makes sense. It's the strongest type of bone. Uh, it's densely packed, very few spaces. So our, our bone tissue and our cells and all the uh, collagen and uh, minerals and everything is all very densely packed. Uh, few spaces, which means it does not contain any red bone marrow. Okay, so there's no red bone marrow in the compact bone itself. Now there's red bone marrow in the spongy bone, which we'll talk about in a second. And in children, there's red bone marrow in the medullary cavity in the center of the bone organ, which we'll talk about in the bone lecture. But that's different from there being red bone marrow in the compact bone itself. There are no spaces in the compact bone for there to be any red bone marrow, so there is none. Okay, spongy bone makes up the other 20% or so of the skeleton. Uh, it's weaker because it has lots of spaces and it's much less organized. It's a very disorganized sort of layout of cells and, and um, collagen and, and so on. Um, but it has a few advantages. It's lighter and easier to move because it has more spaces, uh, which means that we have it strategically in certain bones to make them lighter and easier to move. So it makes up most of the bone tissue in short, flat, and irregular bones. So that's like the scapulas, for example, are mostly spongy bone. So that makes sense because we need our scapulas to be able to freely, easily move up and down on our thorax. And if it was mostly compact bone, they'd be a lot heavier and our musculature would have to look pretty different to be able to move that bone as easily as we do the way it is. Um, so in bones that we want to be light and easy to move, we have more spongy bone. Uh, so red bone marrow, again, like I mentioned a minute ago, um, we only have in the spaces of spongy bone in adults. That's the only place in adults that we find red bone marrow, in the spaces of spongy bone. Um, in kids, it's also found in the medullary cavity, so the, the long narrow cavity in the diaphysis of a long bone. Uh, it's also found in 
red bone marrow is there in kids. And um, that's because they're smaller and they're trying to produce red um, blood cells much faster than in humans because they're growing. Uh, so the kids aren't just trying to keep pace with how many blood cells they're producing. They have to constantly be increasing in number as they're growing and have more tissue that they need more blood to supply. Um, and they have less real estate of spongy bone. So that isn't enough space in the body for, to have sufficient amount of red bone marrow to supply a little kid's body. Um, so as we grow, we convert that red bone marrow inside of the, the shaft of the bone that is converted into yellow bone marrow in adults for fat storage. Um, so in adults, then it's only found in spongy bone. All right. Thank you.